call it. Thank God for everything. You know, just doing a biblical word study. That's all this is. Uh, one word at a time. And we're going to be doing inheritance. Uh, we touched on a lot of different things uh, related to this last week. I think we finished up with the uh, Creophosius, which is the adoption. And that's, that's part of the inheritance, too. Uh, we're adopted into that inheritance because, um, you know, it was first given to Abraham. And uh, we'll, we'll look at some of those verses. But I was just reading this last thing uh, in, this, in, the, in the book, in the Theological Dictionary of the New Testament. If you got it, uh, volume three. And um, I'm just going to finish up the last few pages of uh, this particular word, uh, Clara Namos. And um, let, me, uh, let me give you that uh, definition here, what we're looking at. Tell me right. the uh, tell me the page number, please. Seven. I'm, I'm starting on page seven eighty one. At the very bottom, the uh, theological usage. The word group in the New Testament uh, number two theological usage. And these are the words we're going to be looking at, and others, but these are the main ones here. This is. Uh, Cleronomeo, which is the verb to inherit or to be an heir or to obtain an inheritance. And we're also looking at cleronomia, which is the feminine noun, and it just means inheritance and inheritance or property. And then you have uh, 2818 would be a cleronomos, and that's the masculine noun. Uh, and it means an heir, a one who receives uh, by lot or an heir. And we have fellow heirs. Uh, this is soon cleronomos. You can see the soon in there. That's 4789. Soon cleronomos. It's a fellow heir, a joint heir, or uh, someone together. And that's basically what we're going to be looking at. So I'm just going to start reading from this the, uh, the theological usage here. So this uh, special uh, sense acquired by the group in the New Testament is to be found almost entirely in the parable of the wicked husbandman in Mark 12, uh, 1 and 2. I'm going to put this up over here. Mark 12, 1 and 2. Excuse me, Mark 12, 1 to 12. And we'll just read this. Guys. At, at that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples weren't hungered, and he began to pluck. Uh, Mark, excuse me, I've got Matthew here. Mark, didn't, as soon as I saw that first sentence, I said something's wrong here. There we go. All right. Uh, and he began to speak unto them by parables. And we know what a parable is. A certain man planted a vineyard. He set a hedge about it. And he did the place for the wine fat and built a tower. And he led it out to husbandmen. And he went into a far country. At the season... He sent to the husbandman a servant that he might receive from the husbandman the fruit of the vineyard. And they caught him, they beat him, and they sent him away empty. And again, he sent unto them another servant. And at him they cast stones and wounded him in the head and sent him away shamefully handled. Uh, again, he sent another. And him they killed and many others, beating some and killing some. So having yet therefore one son, his well-beloved, he sent him also last unto them, saying, They will reverence my son. But the husbandmen said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance shall be ours. And they took him and killed him and cast him out of the vineyard. So what shall therefore the Lord of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the husbandman, and he will give the vineyard to others. And 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 have ye not, not read the scripture? The stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marveling, and is it is marvelous in our eyes. And they sought to lay hold of him, but feared the people. For they knew that he had spoken the parable against them, and they left him 
and went their way. So he's speaking this parable. Jesus is speaking this parable to the people. And they know that he's referencing them. Uh, they rejected him. Uh, and they eventually they're going to kill him. But he says, they, they said, come on, let's let's take him because this is the heir. And they thought they were going to uh, get get the inheritance just by killing the, the, the person who, who, who's it, who was the rightful heir. So he, they said, this is the heir. This is the Kleronomos. So let's let's kill him and let us get the inheritance. It'll be ours. The Kleronomia. And we know that that's not going to happen. So the heir is is the son, and and the inheritance is God's kingdom. So basically, that's what he's saying: is the kingdom of God. Uh, a firm link is established between sonship and inheritance, such as we hardly ever find in the Old Testament and later Judaism. And this runs through the whole of the New Testament. We looked at the the Old Testament words the. Uh, Nakal and Yarash inherit and a uh, portion and things like that. But most of the time it, it's it's talking about inheritance of land right here, right now on the earth. And there's uh, I'm trying to think of a reference to to a future eschatological uh, end time inheritance. Uh, but when it's talking about the kingdom of God here, you'll find this mostly in the New Testament. So thus Paul uh, although he, he never calls Christ kleronomos, he refers to Christians as sum kleronomoi Christo, so joint heirs with Christ, and that would be in uh, Romans 7, 8.17. So Romans 8.17. Oh, the joint, uh, let me put up here, Romans where is it there we go here we go uh and if children then heirs heirs of god and joint heirs with christ if so be that we suffer with him we may be also glorified together so glorified together there's another word here glorified together is soon doxazo you got the doxa, which is the glory, and, uh, and the soon, with, glorified together, glorified with. So th these heirs, these kleronomos, uh, and we're soon kleronomos, we're heirs with him. Uh, so he's the heir. Uh, and um, let me see, and, and, and attributes the inheritance of Christians expressly to their pure thesia. And that is the adoption. And we looked at that last week. Uh, I don't know if I see it here. Children. Uh, children is uh, technon. Joint heirs with Christ. Uh, I'm looking for that. She will to see you. Um, I know the number is 5207. 5207. We covered this last week oh the sun i'm sorry yeah so huos uh huothesia so uh huos is sun that's right and the 5206 is the uh 5206 is the adoption there you go and that's the huothesia the adoption 5206 okay mm -hmm. And then uh, Galatians 3.29, uh, let me see, Galatians 3.29, uh, I don't have the, uh, I should have put these numbers next to the verses, got 3.18 here, so I'm just going to have to search here for the 3.29, here he is. 329 and he says and if ye be christ's then are ye abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise and this is what this is all about this is the promise uh that was given to abraham uh and then four seven um uh, wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son and if a son then an heir of god 
through Christ. So it's through Christ. So in the careful introduction to Hebrews, it is said of the son, uh, whom appointed heir of all things. So that would be the first, uh, first one in Hebrews, appointed heir of all things. Um, let me see here, appointed heir, Galatians, uh, Hebrews 1, here he goes. Hebrews 1 and 2 is, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. So uh, you have to, when you, when you have these books, you, you theological dictionaries, and you see these Greek words in here, these Greek phrases, you have to go one by one and look up these words to find out what it is. Uh, this particular one, uh, in the, it says, in the careful introduction to Hebrews. So you got to figure it's the first chapter. And you'll find this, uh, he, it is said of the son, uh, on ethikon, or theos, kleronomon, panton. Uh, a, a lot of this stuff you, you see, kleronomon means means air, and panton means all or all things. You know, pan means all. Uh, pas o is the all. So you can kind of like figure it out once you get uh, used to looking at these words. But uh, according to the, the, the common Greek and Oriental view, sonship is the basis of inheritance. So in the parable of the wicked husbandman, inheritance does not mean actual inheritance, but expectation of it. The son does not come as the lord of the vineyard with the full power of one who is already in possession. Albeit foolishly, the husbandmen think that they can kill the son without penalty. Only the risen Lord has entered upon his inheritance in uh, Matthew 28, 18. Matthew 28, 18. I got to find out which, which word this is. Um, 20... 818. All right, I gotta go this way now. Matthew 2818. 18. All right, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and the earth. And that's why I couldn't find it in here because the, the inheritance is not in there. So, uh, and then in um, one might apply Paul's parable in uh, in Galatians 4.1 uh, to the earthly activity of Jesus. And uh, let me go to this uh, this 4.1, this 3 and 4, uh, Galatians 3 and Galatians 4. I think I have them all. Hold on a second. Galatians 3, here it is. Right. I'm going to get, I'm going to read this too. Also, uh, there's some good stuff in here. It says uh, in Galatians three, uh, this is from uh, uh, Barnes. I think well, I like what Poole says. Hold on a second. Galatians, Poole, 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 Galatians four. That's three one. Let's go to this four one. Okay, and this is Barnes also. Um, okay, that it it was under the gospel uh, only that they received the full advantages of freedom, and that's Galatians 4, 1 to 5. Uh, now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so, we when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law that might receive the adoption of sons. Uh, before Christ came indeed, uh, there were true children of God and heirs of life, but they were in a condition of minors and they had not the privilege of sons. Uh, an heir uh, to a great 
a state, says the apostle, is treated substantially as if he were a servant. Uh, he, is all, he is under tutors and governors. Uh, he is not permitted to enter on his inheritance. He is kept under the restraint of law. So it was with the people of God under the law of Moses. And this is where you get to differentiate between uh, Abraham and, and the promise that was made to him and that his seed will inherit uh, the earth. Uh, but that was before the law of Moses. So he got it by faith. And that's very important. They were they were under restraints and were admitted to comparatively few of the privileges of the children of God. But Christ came to redeem those who were under the law and to place them in the elevated condition of adopted sons. Galatians 4, 4 and 5. They were no longer servants and it was unreasonable that they would they should conform again to the Mosaic rites in the customs as it would be for the heir of the full age who was has entered in on inheritance to return to condition of minorship and to be placed again under the tutors and governors and to be treated as a servant. So when you become a full age, you know, you're no longer under tutors and governors and you're not treated as a servant, you're, a, you're an heir. So as sons of God, God had uh, set forth the spirit of his son into their hearts and they were unable to cry, Abba, Father. They were no longer servants, but heirs of God and should avail themselves of the privilege of the heirs. Uh, and, and because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son in your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Uh, wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through the Christ. So while we were under the law, we were, we were servants to that. And we were... Uh, Tutors, and uh, there's another word of pedagogos. Uh, uh, so sustaining this relation and being admitted to these privileges, the apostle remonstrates with them for returning again to the weak and beggarly elements of the former dispensation, the condition of servitude to rights and customs in which they were uh, before uh, they embraced the gospel. That's what Colossians 2.14 is talking about. It was, it was nailed to the cross. So Galatians 4, 8 to 11, he says, How be it then, when you knew not God, you did service unto them, which by nature are no gods. But now, after that you have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn you again to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto you desire again to be in bondage? So he, he had gone to Galatia, and he set up these churches, and he left and he comes back and he sees the people are still doing the same things all over again. They want to do, do the law and his, the Judaizers were there and everything. So he says, you, you observe days and months and times and years. I'm afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. So he's trying to get them out of the law and, and, and into the faith. So when they were ignorant of God, they, they served those who are no gods. And there was some excuse for that. But now uh, they had known God. So, you know, somebody, if you don't know God, it doesn't matter. But if somebody t tells you the truth, uh, then you you got to stay with it. Uh, so they were acquainted with his law. They were admitted to the privilege of his children. They were made free. And there could be no excuse for re returning again to the bondage of those who had no true knowledge of the liberty which the gospel gave. And you're at liberty because of the gospel, but you're also a servant to it. So that, that liberty comes with servitude. So yet they observed days and times as though uh, these were binding and, and they had never been freed from them. That's like hearing the truth and, and, and then going back and, uh, and realizing that baptism is blood and, and, and circumcision is of the heart. And then all of a sudden go and circ circumcising your children and have them dipped in water for what? You know, you, we're not going to go back to that. <clears throat> and the apostle says that he is afraid that his labor bestowed on them to make them acquainted with the plan of redemption had been in vain. <clears throat> uh, and, and for to bring them to a just sense of their error, he reminded them of their former attachment to him. Galatians 4, 12 to 20. Uh, Brethren, I beseech you as I am, for I am as ye are, and have not uh, you have not injured me at all. You you know how through infirmity of the flesh 
I preached the gospel unto you at first, and my temptation, which was in my flesh, you despised not nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Where is then the blessedness you spake of? For I bear you record that if it had been possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and given them to me. And this is where we get the, the, the idea that he, his infirmity was in his vision. He had poor eyesight. Uh, very bad, I say. <laughs> and I am therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth. <laughs> uh, they zealously affect you, but not well, yea. They would exclude you that you might affect them. Uh, but it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing, and not only when I am present with you. I mean, Paul, when he was Saul, he was zealous too, but, but it wasn't in a good thing. So my little children of whom I tra tra travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you, I desire to be present with you now and and to change my voice, for I stand in doubt of you. <laughs> so he's going on with these Galatians about that. And a lot of this stuff has to do uh, with inheritance and 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 and, and Abraham. <coughs> um, I should go back to three uh, history of two children, Abraham and the condition of Hagar, the slave under the command. <clears throat> um, tell me ye that desire to be under the law do you not hear the law for it is written that Abraham had two sons the one by a bondmaid the other by a free woman uh, so and this is this is the difference between the law and, and, and the faith uh, but uh, he who was of the bond woman was born after the flesh but he of the free woman was by what promise the epangelia and what was the promise that the inheritance was the promise which things are an allegory uh, for these are the two covenants the one from mount sinai which gendereth the bondage which is agar for this agar is mount sinai in arabia and answereth to jerusalem which is now and is in bondage with her children but to jerusalem which is above is free which is the mother of us all for it is, written, it is written, Rejoice, thou barren that bearest not, break forth and cry, thou that travailest not. For the desolate hath many more children than she which hath an husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are children of the promised, not, not Ishmael. <clears throat> but as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. And that's, that's Isaac. And there's some more good stuff in here about that. Uh, can't go through all of this right now. Uh, but Galatians 3, <laughs> the last um, the last part of it has to do, uh, <clears throat> and here's the schoolmaster part again uh, in, in, in Galatians 3, 23 and 24. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. And that's the schoolmaster. <clears throat> that's the pedagogos, the schoolmaster, the instructor. He was a tutor or a guardian or guide of boys uh, among the Greeks and the Romans. Uh, the name was applied to trustworthy slaves who were charged with the duty of supervising the life and morals of boys belonging to the better class. The boys were not allowed so much as to step out of the house without them before arriving at the age of manhood. So these pedagogos, they took care of the kids. And um, that's what we were uh, under the law. And then faith came. But you see, Abraham had, had the faith before the law. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Genesis, uh, Galatians uh, 3, uh, 25 to 29. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster, for you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> For as many of you uh, as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Uh, there is neither Jew nor Greek, and there was Jew and Greek, uh, not Greek, but there was Jew and Gentile, 
in Abraham's household. Um, and that was the, the mystery from before the foundation of the world, that the church was there already. Uh, the Jews and the Gentiles already had the message. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. <laughs> and if you be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And that's the whole thing there. Heirs according to the promise, <laughs> which was given to Abraham. And we can go back and look at, look at all those verses there. Um, let me see what I have here. <laughs> let me see. Um, um, oh, I, I missed the double portion. I was going to speak about the double portion. Uh, yeah. Well, I guess I could skip that. But uh, the double portion was, was the full blessing and inheritance as, as to the firstborn heir. Um, and that special place which the heir occupies in the father's household and in his plans. And it was a, a double portion. And that's the right of the heir. Um, <coughs> see if I have anything on it. I, Deuteronomy uh, was the double portion. Here it is. Uh, Deuteronomy 21 7. Uh, but he shall be acknowledged, he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he hath, for he is the beginning of the strength. The right of the firstborn is his. And then also, um, we talk about a double portion. We talk about the Elisha. Um, and he's he was like, you know, uh, and it came to pass in, in 2 Kings 2, 9. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said to Elisha, ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be on me. So he's the heir. And he was the rightful heir. So he's getting a double portion. And then uh, Zechariah uh, 9, 12, turn you to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. And what is the hope? The hope is the inheritance. The hope is what? Eternal life. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. And then in Isaiah 61, 7, he says, for your shame, you shall have double. And for confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land they shall possess the double everlasting joy shall be unto them and that's the the word is mishnah uh and i guess that's where you get the, the word mishnah from uh, when they were talking about the uh, the book um, it's the second writing a second double repetition mishnah basically involves a doubling of an original item whether it be getting twice as much originally uh, making a duplicate so as to have an exact copy or having a second item or person, a second rank or section. Thus, Jacob's sons on their second trip to Egypt took double the money they took on the first trip. And that's in Genesis 43, 15. Uh, God promises Israel a double portion, which may mean a superabundance of blessings or perhaps better, the full blessing and inheritance as the firstborn heirs, that special place which the heirs occupies in the father's household and his plans. So that was a quickie on uh, on that. Uh, spent a little bit of time on that. The Mishnah, or Mishnah, Mishnah. We leave that there. Uh, and and Bekor was the firstborn. Uh, we uh, look at that real quick. Um, Oh, uh, one, oh, six, oh, which would be the firstborn. And there's just uh, too much to go into with this. Uh, that's a uh, Bekor, uh, 1060 in the Hebrew, TWOT, 244. And uh, there's a lot. There's the firstborn, the birthright, uh, first fruits, and all of this is in there if you got your TWOT. <laughs> And also uh, 1069, is it? Yeah, I got it here, 1069. It's the same thing here, 1069 is Bakar. Firstborn, new fruit, first lane to be firstborn. And 1069, we'll look at some of the... 69, see how many verses there are for this one. It looks like four, only four. But this 96 verses for this firstborn here. Seth was, uh, took the place of the firstborn. All right. Um, firstling. Uh, 
Uh, beloved firstborn, we did. We looked at that. Yeah, the first child, the voice of an Yeah, okay, new fruit. Okay, uh, I can't uh, go on too many tangents with this, but um, I wanted to start with that, but I, I, I just skipped over it anyway. So, so the promise to Abraham was made uh, before the giving of the law. Abraham got the promise, and and we are the heir of the promise uh, through faith, not the law. Uh, so Abraham included Jews and Gentiles, and we just saw that in uh, Galatians 3 and Galatians 4. Um, so of the promise, not of the flesh or of the law. So it's of the promise. Uh, Romans uh, 9, uh, nothing to do with the law, uh, nothing to do with the flesh. Romans 9, 7 and 8, uh, neither... Because they are the seed of Abraham, are they are children? But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh. These are not the children of God, but the children of the promise accounted for the seed. Um, and then Romans 4, it's all, all through Romans, you'll see this about the difference between the law and, and the faith. This is Romans 4. Looks like 13 and 14, if I can read my writing here, oh, for the promise. And you know what that word is, uh, et bangalio, right? Uh, et bangalia, right? That's the promise. Um, for the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Can't make it any plainer than that. So uh, the heir, the 2818, the Um uh, For if they, <clears throat> for if, if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of none effect. So it has nothing to do with the, with the law. I mean, the law is not done away with, uh, but it's, uh, it's fulfilled through the faith. And 8.17, we're probably going to read this about 10 times. <clears throat> and if heir, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs, heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, we may also be glorified together. Let me finish uh, with this here, because there's, uh, there's a couple of things uh, that, I, that stuck out for me here. I forgot where I was, according to the common Greek, what the, oh, I got into Galatians 3.29 and 4.7. Okay, we did that. Uh, and the, hair, the careful introduction to the Hebrews, yes, uh, whom he appointed heir of all things. So according to the common Greek and Oriental view, sonship is the basis of inheritance. Okay, and he, he's given all things, all power is given to him. Um, the, the, the only the risen Lord has entered upon his inheritance. Uh, we were not there yet. Uh, one might apply Paul's parable uh, in Galatians 4 to the earthly activity of Jesus. Uh, and then um, Philippians 2.7. Um, I'm going to keep going back to this here. Uh, Philippians 2.7, uh, form of the servant. You know what? I got to put up another page here because a lot of the times you'll read uh, something in the theological dictionary that has to do with a certain word and you'll run into like a bunch of verses that have don't even have that word in it. And it drives me nuts because I put up the word, I put up the numbers in all of the, uh, you know, the, the word study concordance. I got all the verses with that verse, that word in it. And it's not there when I look at Philippians 2.7. So we'll see what's in here. Philippians 2.7. Uh, it might be in here, who knows. Uh, but he made of himself no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Uh, so, so, and, and John strongly emphasizes uh, the, the the Lord of all, uh, Curios Pantan. Uh, hence, Clarinamos is not used. So, he's talking about uh, inheritance, 
uh, but it, it's used in the, you, you have to read between the lines here to see that there's inheritance here. Uh, okay, um, let me see. Um, uh, indeed, the John, the John writings, apart from Revelation 21 and 7, avoid the word group as a whole, since they set the earthly life of Jesus and his disciples in the light of the supratemporal fulfillment, uh, supratemporal. It just means transcending temporal affairs or uh, transcending temporary life and things like that. So Revelation 21, 7, um, probably the only place where you'll see this 21, 7. Uh, he that overcometh shall inherit all things. Uh, I will be his God and he shall be my son. That's it. And that's it. He says, uh, uh, to to be the uh, to be heir does not now include a title which may be claimed by law, since sonship is not exhausted by descent from the father, but finds fulfillment in the fact that the son does what he sees the father doing. So you don't have to come from the direct line there. Uh, hence, Claronomos uh, inheritance is an eschatological concept. So it's an end times concept. And uh, that's what I'm trying to push here, the, the uh, kingdom of God, the uh, future uh, inheritance. Uh, this leads us to the further point that the inheritance is the kingdom of God. In the parable of the husbandman, only uh, Matthew says this expressly in 2143. And for him, the kingdom is active in all Israel's history. Matthew 2143. 2143. Therefore, I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. That's it. We know that what the kingdom of God is. Um, it's in, in Old Testament times, we're speaking of Israel. It's still speaking of Israel, but it, we are Israel. You know, it's not a physical uh, thing, but I. I uh, he has grasped the, the true sense of the parable. While Judaism did not speak of inheriting the kingdom of God, and the rich young ruler did so only when, like the rabbis, he asked in, in Mark 10, 17. We know what he asked. <clears throat> uh, and when he was gone forth in, into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asking, good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And that's eternal life. Inherit, Claronomeo, eternal, Zainos, and so a life. So he's, he knows what he's talking about there. Uh, and he was a Jew, talking about eternal life, talking about inheritance. Uh, so, the, so, so the combination of uh, inherit uh, the kingdom of God and inherit eternal life. It's, it's, it's established right there. So when, when Jesus in his earthly lowliness describes himself as son and heir, huios kai claronomos, son and heir, the concept of the kingdom of God and of the inheritance is freed from all earthly limitations and qualifications. The kingdom or inheritance is the new world in which God reigns alone and supreme. So if, if Christ as son is heir, uh, his people as, as those set in sonship are soon clear no more, we are fellow heirs. Whereas the element of inheritance is discounted in later Judaism by exploiting the full range of meaning of nakal, we went over that in the Old Testament, and, and yarash, those are the two words here. Uh, this aspect is given full weight in the New Testament. So we, we, we studied nakal and yarash in the Old Testament, and there wasn't too much about being fellow heirs in there, but you'll see it here in, in the New Testament, soon clear one no more. It's given full weight in the New Testament. Uh, yet there is an important nuance. The children are heirs, but their sonship is not based on physical descent, nor on the origin of all natural life in the creative power of God, nor on derivation from Abraham, but 
on the divine call and appointment. And that's the only way. Uh, it's a divine call and appointment. And then he says, you know, he's just because you, you you think you're Abraham's seed, you think you inherit the earth. No, uh, he says, you know, different things about that. Uh, the sons of the kingdom are excluded uh, and many are invited from the east and the west. In Matthew 8, 11. Matthew, yeah, Matthew 8, 11. So it's his, it's him calling and that's it, you know. Uh, he gave it to Abraham and his seed through Isaac, and uh, we don't have to be a direct descendant of Abraham, because uh, he says, "All I say unto you that, uh, and I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven." So it, it doesn't have to be a, a direct descendant, uh, but the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. <laughs> the people who are directly associated, connected to Abraham by blood, they will be cast into out of darkness. So it doesn't matter. They're excluded. Oh, hence, neither Israel, Palestine, nor the temple, nor the Torah can now be called uh, kleronomia theo, inheritance of God. Uh, we read flesh and blood uh, cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So that's God's inheritance. That's uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 50. 1 Corinthians 15, 50. 15, 50. I think that's what it says. Yeah, now I say this, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Uh, sonship and inheritance are grounded in a new creation or to change the figure in huothesia. So that's the new creation. That's the adoption. Uh, Paul can uh, regard this as future. In Romans 8.23. I'd rather do it this way than fiddle around over there looking for it on the uh, concordance page. I'll just throw it in here. 8.23. He says, not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, you will to see her, to with the redemption of the body. So the redemption of the body is what? That's that's resurrection. And that's that's eschatology. That's, that's, that's future. Apolutrosis, redemption, deliverance. Uh, and the first fruits, aparche. And we just looked a little bit at first fruits in the Old Testament. Uh, so, so we groan within our souls. Stanazzo, we're groaning. And in the same way, although more exclusively, the uh, kleronomia of Christians is an object of hope. And that's what it's all about. It's the hope. Um, let me see something else down here. Ephesians 5, 5. What's Ephesians 5, 5? I got it written in the margin here. Uh, Ephesians 5 5. The hope. It's all hope. And we'll see a bunch of verses on that maybe later. Uh, for this you know that no whoremonger, no unclean person, no covetous person who is a dollar hath any inheritance in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Christ and of God. I thought there would be something in there about hope, but no. Uh, in, in respect of the Galatian passages, there is justification for this verdict, this verdict, uh, but it's generally, uh, oh, yeah, never mind. So the, uh, the, the things associated with uh, Kleronomian and the genitives, which means uh, possession uh, dependent on Kleronomia, show uh, what is the content of the inheritance. So the, the content of the inheritance is... Um, Salvation, first of all, uh, Hebrews uh, one fourteen. Let me go back to this because I got some numbers written here. Hebrews one fourteen. This would be twenty eight sixteen. Hebrews one fourteen. So this is the um, the word study concordance. This is what it would look like if you had the book open. To uh, Hebrews, what did I say one fourteen. Okay. Um, here, uh, 
Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of the what? Of the salvation. So that's what we're, we're airing, we're inheriting uh, salvation. Uh, soteria. Soteria. And we're also inheriting the glory. And we're going to look. Uh, uh, the glory is uh, 28.18. That's Roman 8.17. Well, how many times are we going to look at this? Uh, Romans 8. Uh, 817, and we'll see uh, glorified together. And if children, heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, we may also be glorified together. And that's doxa. Okay, so uh, it's 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 salvation um, of the body, uh, salvation, Ephesians. 118 2817 Ephesians 118 118 the eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints so there's your hope there and the calling I did a little bit on calling I mean there's so much on on being called and uh, I wonder if this is the the word I was looking at. Twenty eight, twenty one. Yeah, it's connect. It's so close to this. It's clasis. And you'd have to go back into this theological dictionary, go back a few hundred pages to four ninety one, uh, and read about this. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you the exact pages if you go uh, four ninety one to four ninety six has these two words clasis. Places 2821. All right, let me get these out of here. 2821. That's the calling. And that's what this is. This inheritance is a calling. You're not going to get any inheritance without a calling. Uh, and 2822, 2822. I'll throw these up here. Clasis. All right, Clasis. And Kletos, which is called. And it's it's an adjective. It's actually a verbal adjective, and this is actually a verbal noun over here. Uh, it's a feminine noun, but it's a verbal noun uh, for the the gifts and calling of of God are without repentance. Um, do, 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 do. So, and we might run into a couple of these calling words when we're doing the inheritance. See, there's the inheritance there. That's the one we just looked at. Ephesians 1:18. Inheritance. Um, what is yeah, uh, there is one body, one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. And we know what the hope is. The hope is the inheritance, is the salvation. And another word um, that we're looking at here, let me go back to this. Uh, that was Ephesians 118. And then um, we got Mark 16, 14, but I don't have it. Uh, I don't have it circled here. Let me just look that up. Quick, Mark 16, 14, 16, 14. Afterward, he, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. That's in here, but um, I don't know. I want to skip that. And uh, 1 Peter 3, 7. First Peter three seven. First Peter three seven as uh, likewise ye husbands dwell with them according to the knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of what? Of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Uh, heirs together. And that's the 47 area 89 that's the soon clara nomos that you be heirs together and then um eulogia is first peter 3 9. let me go down to first peter 3 9. he says uh not rendering evil for evil uh or railing for railing but contrary wise blessing knowing that you are there unto called that you should inherit what a blessing inherit uh eulogio a blessing eulogio 
So that's part of the inheritance too. So in, inherit the kingdom means inherit life, inherit salvation, and inherit blessing. And those are the three things that I just wanted to point out here. So in some, uh, and then uh, eternal life is um, Titus 3, 7. Titus 3, 7. It's down here. Titus 3, 7. Uh, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. And that's what the, the heirs is all about, eternal life. All right. This means that the spatial conceptions are less significant. We still read in, in Matthew 5.5, 5, uh, blessed are they, um, blessed be the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Uh, but the earth is not the epitome of the inheritance nor is a lot or portion in the heavenly regions. Uh, it is God's rule or reign, which lavishes on man the inconceivable riches of the divine life. Uh, nor is this an abstraction. As life from God, it implies commission, service, and lordship. Um, I didn't look these words up, but Matthew uh, 25, 21. Matthew 25, 21. There's a lot of responsibility here, too, with this 25, 21 inheritance. You know, you say, oh, sit back, relax, and fold your hands and put your, your hands behind your head and say, yeah, yeah, put your feet up. Yeah, I got my inheritance. You no. Know? He said, his Lord said unto him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things enter thou into the joy of the Lord. So that's the commission, service, and lordship. Um, looking for the word here. Well, that's a servant. Yeah, commission, sir. So he, he, you can see commission, service, and 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 lordship here. Uh, a good and faithful servant, uh, doulos. He was given a task to do. All right. He was given a commission. He'd go he'd do this and he did it and he was a good servant. Uh, and he says, uh, and then I will make you ruler. I will make you a uh, catistime, a ruler over many catistime to make ruler to set in place. Uh, all right. So those are the three things there. And then Luke uh, 19, 17. 1917. Uh, and he said, well, same thing. Uh, and he says, I will, uh, he uses different English. Uh, we use different English, but the, the, the Greek is the same. And, he's, and he said unto him, well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful and very little, you have authority over 10 cities. So he's given him authority here. He's given him, uh, excuse me, authority is exousia. Or dunamis, one or the other. Uh, exousia, there you go. Authority, power, authority. So you, you, you talk in commission, service, and lordship. He gives us the commission, we do the service, and boom, we're going to reign with him. Basically what he's saying here, uh, to make ruler. So uh, Paul in Revelation can speak of reigning. And uh, uh, Romans 5, 17, we'll get into the Basilio. Uh, Romans 5, 17. Uh, for if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. And the reign here, if I can get past my thing here, which you can't see, only I can see. Basilio, 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 the reign of king. And it comes uh, from this Basilius, which is a king. And it goes all the way down to a basis, which is the foot or the walking, where one steps. Um, and uh, Basilica, that's what I got up here. The old PH uh, Roman Catholic Church is a basilica. Big deal. And then um, uh, in Zoe Basilia life, yes, 
Um, many things. Uh, I'm just looking where the, the Zoe is in here. Uh, Zoe. Um, looking for the Zoe is um, First Corinthians. First Corinthians four eight. First Corinthians four eight. Eight. Now you are full, now you are rich, you have reigned as kings without us, and I would to God you did reign, that we also might reign with you. A lot of reigning in there. Um, but where's this Zoe here? Uh, never mind. Okay. Okay, Sum Basilios is the uh, 48... 21 48 21 that's, mm, Basilios, that's the two verses there okay uh if we suffer we shall also reign with him if we deny him he will also deny us so that's the sum uh basilios basilio sum basilio to reign with uh, and then um we got revelation 5 10 what word is this? Revelation 5.10. Like this here. Yeah. And has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. So we're reigning now. As far as that goes, uh, when we tell the truth and, and people want to flee away from us, we got rule over them. You know, it's not the kind of rule that uh, that we cherish and, and look up. But it's 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 just knowing that uh, we're in charge, man. You know, nobody can tell us anything because we know the truth, and we tell the truth, people run from us. Uh, Revelation 24, and I saw thrones and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark on their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And we know this is when you could take this literally and run with it and, and think that Christ is coming back to reign a thousand years on this planet and that's just not what this is talking about it's talking about the kilia which is happening right now we're in the kilia and it's at least two thousand years and we're living and reigning with christ right now and um what was i looking at here uh 22 5 22 5 Talking about reigning, I think. 22 and 5. Uh, there shall be no night there, and there was no need of the candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. I just, all I had to do was put this rain up. Uh, 936, all the verses that uh, are here, and you'll see them, the reigning. There's 18 verses. Reign forever and ever. And what's the last one here? Uh, 22 and 5. Yeah, okay, 22 and 5. And what's 1, 9? Nothing. I'm not even going to look at that because I don't have it circled. When I don't circle something, it's not even uh, nothing. Revelation 21 and 2. 21 and 2. I don't see that here. Revelation 21 and 2 talks about, uh, okay, and 21 and 2, the, uh, John uh, uh, sees the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven, and he is told that it is, uh, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Let me see. Be with them. So death and pain are abolished, and all things are made new. 
Uh, then we read in verse 7, uh, he says, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Okay, so Matthew 7, and that's the huios. Uh, this tells us uh, what is meant by the basilia to theo, which is the kingdom of God. Uh, it's by life, salvation, and blessing. In short, it tells us what the inheritance includes. Uh, in, the, in the light of this passage, the apparent contradiction of 1 Peter 1, 3 is easily explained, and there is no apparent Com contradiction in the Bible. Some people think there is, but if you think there's a contradiction in the Bible, you're mistaken. First Peter 1 and 3 talks about, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy, mercy has begotten us again, that's born again, unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away reserved for you in heaven who are kept by the power of god through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed at the last time so i don't know what uh what they're talking about here as far as a apparent contradiction uh so this passage and and that in revelation might suggest a spatial conception and added support seems to be given by verses in which kleronomia is used in much the same way as kleros. Uh, nevertheless, the, the, the decisive point is the absence of any idea of spatially distinct portions of heaven. And we know that there is no spatially distinct part. Um, to a precision, uh, yes, Sometimes you read the notes on the bottom of the page and they give you a uh, effect. Uh, however, the clever nomian is linked specifically to kingdom. So inherit the earth uh, is really inheriting the kingdom. And where was I here? Uh, it might suggest a spatial uh, nevertheless. Okay. We may add in conclusion that it is no accident that the common rabbinic idea of inheriting hell does not occur. <laughs> you can't inherit hell. And the rabbis, uh, nakal and yarash, seems, means to acquire or to attain to. Uh, in the New Testament, it is inheritance on the ground of filial relationship to God. Uh, the New Testament view sheds new light on that of the Old Testament especially in Paul and Hebrews. Uh, in, in Galatians at Romans 4, uh, Paul found himself confronted by a Jewish Christian thesis, which may be reconstructed as followed. Uh, promises are made to Abraham and his seed. This is uh, Romans 4. I'm probably going to read a couple of these things several times romans 4 13 and 14. this is the promise to the seed uh, uh, for the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to abraham or to his seed through the law but through the righteousness of faith uh, if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void and the promise is made of none effect because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be of grace. And that's a, a gift from God. Uh, to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us, of, of us all. Um, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, Abraham, uh, before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. So calling dead things to life is basically what he's saying there. Um, so his seed and uh, Genesis uh, 13, 15. 
Okay, this is 13, 15. Uh, for all the land which thou seest, to, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. All right. All right. Uh, these promises are to be fulfilled in, in the Messianic age. Uh, who may refer them to themselves? That is, who is the sperma of Abraham? Who is the seed of Abraham? Or in Paul's words in this connection, who are the huioi, who are the sons of Abraham, or who are the heirs of the promise? Uh, the answer of the Judaizers is, is that the sons of Abraham are his physical descendants who keep the law, and the men of other nations who are incorporated into sonship by accepting the law. Now, maybe that's how it was back then. So, and, and 35, let me look at this note down here. No, okay. Uh, and this way, the promise to Abraham, you lo, uh, bless, uh, bless all family of the earth in Genesis 12, 3. Genesis 12, 3. I just looked at that Greek real quick. Uh, 12, 3. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. And these shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Basically, okay, that will be fulfilled. Uh, that's a future thing. Uh, so uh, thus, uh, there thus arises the thesis, uh, which uh, in Galatians 3.18, Paul says, Kleronomius ek nomo, uh, inheritance by the law, uh, here is the portion assigned to Abraham and his seed, the fulfillment of the promise in the messianic time. Galatians, Galatians 3.18. I'm, I'm reading the uh, Greek here. I just want to make sure I got it right. <coughs> Galatians 3.18. 18. Uh, for the inheritance, for if the inheritance be of the Lord, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Uh, so Paul uh, has several arguments to bring against this thesis. He says the problem given as a testament to Abraham and his seed is in force long before the giving of the law. And we've seen that because Abraham got the promise before Moses went on Mount Sinai, right? So it is, uh, it is in force because God had uttered it. That's simple as that. Hence, God does not add to it, just as man does not add to a testament once it is legally in force. And uh, let me see what it says down in the notes here. Paul's point is that what God has said is already in force by the mere fact that he has said it. <laughs> Makes sense to me. The inheritance allotted to Abraham and his seed cannot be won then, ek nomu, by the law. It is given ek Appalachius. It is given the promise. Uh, similarly, the status of heir cannot be attained by fulfillment of the law. Uh, so what made Abraham a recipient of the promise was pistis, faith. Hence, uh, oi ek pistuos, which means of faith. Hence, of faith are also sons or children of Abraham, Galatians 3, 7. Uh, he who belongs to the Messiah is of the sperma, the seed of Abraham. For the sperma, the seed to whom the promise was given, as denoted by the singular, is not a group consisting of those who keep the law, but it is one Christ himself. That's Galatians 3. <coughs> and boy, he, he, he makes this different. Uh, it's singular. See, 316 to 19. Uh, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. So Christ is the seed. And this, I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, so you want to go crazy, you do some math here and get into chronology. This is where you, a good place to start. 
to was 430 years after cannot disannul that it should be made the promise of none effect for the if the inheritance be of the law it is no more promise but god gave it to abraham by promise and right here i want to go nuts with this 430 years but um because from abraham to moses was not 430 years Oh, man, I can't get into this here. Um, nah, I can't. I, I, I can go nuts with this. Maybe some other time. When we do get into uh, chronology and genealogy and all of that stuff. Uh, but let me, let me just get through this. I got another page. Another page and a half here. But I'm going to put that on the side there. And uh, I'm going to talk about that sometime. Because when it talks, no, no, I don't even want to do it. Forget it. No, 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 no. Okay. Um, for the promise. Here we go. What was I? What was I up to? Uh, Pace, uh, Pistis, Galatians 3, 7, 3, 6, 9. Okay. So the disputed comparison in Galatians 4, 1 through 7. Galatians 4, 1 through 7. Uh, now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from the servant, though be Lord of all, we read that, uh, is also relevant. Uh, the, uh, this uh, speaks of a father who under his will has placed his son, a minor, under a guardian and trustee until a time which the father himself has set. So that's the tutor and the governor. Uh, in, in two respects, the heir is a, a doulos, a servant. First, he is not his own master. So the epi, epitropos, which is the tutor. Let me let me show you epitropos 2012. 2012. Epitropos is the steward or a tutor. And this goes with the pedagogos and the other guy uh, that we'll talk about in a second. Epitropos, the steward or the tutor. Okay. Uh, is this. Uh, secondly, uh, he does not have control of his property or inheritance. He's a minor. Uh, this is the function of the who? Is the oikonomos. Uh, the oikonomos is the governor, 3623, 3623. So these are what the kid is under, the minor. And this is a steward. It, it's steward, but it's oikonomos, which is a steward or a chamberlain or a governor, manager of a household or household affairs. And these two words here. Uh, and yeah, you got it both here in Galatians 4 2. You got both of the words here. Uh, tutors, epitropos, and governors. And you can put uh, pedagogos in there too. It's the same thing. Uh, okay. Uh, on, uh, on the other hand, he is potentially a curios panton, or, or he is, he's, he's potentially he is lord of all. And that's Galatians 4 1. Galatians 4.1. He's Lord of all, potentially, uh, but not yet. He's still a minor under the law. <laughs> uh, now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all, uh, eventually. So uh, this, this is the position of the heirs of Abraham, to whom belong the blessing. Uh, Genesis 12.3, I think we just looked at that. I know we looked at Genesis 13. Uh, Genesis 12, 3 is before that. So we'll see what this says. 12, 3. 12, 3. I will bless them. Okay, yeah. What was 13, 15? Oh, all the land I will give to you. Okay, good. Okay. Okay. So this uh, blessing, uh, it applies to Jew, Jews and Gentiles. Because they were in his household. Uh, so under the um, under the until the fullness of time, uh, both are ser duloi, servants. Galatians 4, 3 to 8. Galatians 4, 3 and 8. So even so, when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements, the rudiments, the stoichion of the world. And eight, how be it then, 
when you knew not God, you did service unto them, which by nature are no gods. And and both are received, uh, have received their sonship through Christ. So the starting point and the goal of Paul's expositions is a new understanding of the place of Abraham and the promises made to him in salvation history. In the light of Christ, the promises, which in Judaism are overshadowed by the law, shine out independently of the law. Clara nomos now becomes a term belonging to salvation history. And that's the eschatology, that's the full time, that's future. It is raised, for it raises the question, who is integrated into the history of salvation, which began with Abraham? Uh, the absence of the corresponding rabbinic uh, terminology is evidence of the new orientation, because you don't hear about this much in the Old Testament, but except for the, the verses that talk about Abraham being the, the heir uh, or his seed being the heir of the promise. Uh, here, too, when it refers back to the Old Testament, Clara Nomos has an eschatological content, but the initiation of fulfillment is stronger now. In Christ, the blessing of Abraham has already come to the Gentiles. Uh, to the same circle of thought belong uh, the promises. Uh, Romans 4, 13. Romans 4, 13. Epangaleo. Uh, for the promise that he, he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham, who was to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. So this promise, Epangelia, Epangelia, that's what we're talking about, the promise. Uh, and Ephesians 3, 6, Ephesians 3, 6. Uh, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise by Christ, in Christ, by the gospel. All this stuff is, ties together here about this. So um, so in, in, in Hebrew, uh, uh, kleronomia is the concept, excuse me, in, in Hebrews, Kleronomia is the content of the Old Testament promise, uh, 9.15. So we're almost at the end here. Let me just get through this uh, last section here. Thank God I didn't get into the genealogy. I'd still be there. Um, 9.15. Here, where am I? Hebrews 9.15. 9.15. And for this cause, he's the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, that they which are called right receive the promise of eternal inheritance. I mean, I'm looking at these verses like I'm seeing them for the first time, uh, just because we're doing this inheritance study and we're talking about the promise and, uh, and all of that stuff. Um, line 15. And the gospel 2098, I'm not going to get into all those words there. Um, and then in uh, Hebrews 6, 17. Hebrews 6, 17. Where in God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs the promise of promise, the heirs of promise, that's us, the immutability, the unchangeableness of his counsel confirmed it by an oath. And when you, I see the word confirmed, uh, that takes me back to uh, chronology too, because uh, it was confirmed, and that's where the 430 years comes, starts at the confirmation, not when it was given to Abraham, but the confirmation. Let's get away from that. Um, Hebrews 6, 7, 8, uh, are, are Christians, which are heirs in the twofold sense that they have taken over the promises and that they have attained to what is promised. Uh, so in 618, what is promised is what is hoped for. 618, that is it. Uh, well, we did 17, let's do 18. He says that by two immutable things, 
in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. What's that hope? That's the inheritance. Uh, the hope set before us. In Hebrews, however, Kleronomian is much closer to the simple acquire, like in the Hebrew Nakal and Yarash. Uh, let me see. Uh, by his attitude, uh, of faith, Noah became 11-7, uh, heirs, let me see, 11-7, this is the uh, Faith uh, Hall of Fame here, he was 11-7, uh, by faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet, no rain, moved with fear, preparing an ox to the saving of his house, uh, by the which he con condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith heir of the righteousness uh, and with the fathers in view with the readers are admonished that they be uh, followers uh, mimite let me see the verse here 612 mimite 612 is that it? Yeah. Uh, that you be not slothful, Hebrews 6.12, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. So you can connect that with Hebrews 11. And this uh, followers is uh, mimites. Uh, so you mimic uh, an imitator. So you, we're a follower. We're a mim imi imi imitator. Mimic. Uh, 612. Uh, in the context, uh, this cannot mean attain the promise, for the aim of the author is to spur on the readers to full assurance, hope unto the end. That's 611. Full assurance, hope unto the end. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. So all of these are connected, the hope, the inheritance, uh, the salvation, the blessing, hope unto the end. And, and to this end, the sworn assurance of God is held out before them. God gave a similar assurance to the fathers, especially to Abraham, and by pistis, faith, and macrothemia, long-suffering, Abraham attained to what was promised. Uh, in other words, the birth of Isaac. In the same way, the promise is set before the reader uh, in order that by patience and long suffering, they may receive what is promised. The further development of comparison with the fathers in chapter 11 interposes the thought in verse 8 that Abraham did not fully attain to what is promised and that throughout his life, he is an example for the readers. And we'll do 11.8. He says... Um, uh, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whither he went. How's that for faith? Um, so he's an example for the readers. He, he was to receive the land as kleronomia in firm possession. And the same promise applied to Isaac and Jacob heirs with him, sum uh, those who with him receive the same promise. In verse 9, is it 11? Yeah, 11 and 9, he says, by faith, by faith he sojourned in the land of promise, <laughs> as in, in the land of the inheritance, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise, heirs with him. Heirs with him. That's the sum clara no more. Okay. Heirs with him. Uh, the same promise. They did not attain to what was promised. Uh, in verse 13, uh, they did not attain to it. Um, these all died in faith, not having received the promises, the inheritance, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded, persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were 
strangers and pilgrims on the earth. And that's us. We're, we're, we're traveling through time here. We're strangers and pilgrims on the earth, and we're waiting. So, you know, when, when God gave Abraham the, the land, he said, this is a, but the heirs to the promise, what was the promise? The, the, the promise is the inheritance. What's the inheritance? That's the hope of eternal life. So that's what we're looking for. We're not here looking for any land or anything. We're strangers and pilgrims on the earth. What are those two words? Strangers. There we are. Xenos, we're a stranger and pilgrims. Uh, para, para pide, pideos, pidemos, para pidemos. All right, so with Xenos, we know stranger is, is, is uh, Xenos. I think it's not strange, these things can come from me. But this para uh, of, from, at, beside, near, and epidemo. To be there, to a stranger, to be present among one's own people in one's city or one's native land, to be a sojourner, a foreign resident. That's us. <laughs> We're strangers and pilgrims here. And then attained to what was promised. So in, in Hebrews, then, Old Testament history is an impressive illustration of the tension of the not yet of the inheritance its eschatological aspect. So the father-son relation is an evident element in Hebrews 12, 17, when Esau uh, did not attain to this. Hebrews, is it 12? Yeah, 12, 17. 17, it says, uh, for you know, how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, that's Esau, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Um, he wasn't looking for, uh, so the, the blessing was rejected. Uh, we're hoping for what was promised. And what is promised, I got a bunch of verses uh, written down here, but uh, we went through probably all of these inheritance, life, um, what is promised, inheritance, life, righteousness, uh, messianic salvation, uh, the spirit, and to be children, who both who are the and that's good. And, the, and then you got the Klesis and the, the Kletos, and we can look at that uh, some other time. 28, 21, 28, 21, and uh, 28, 22, 22, we'll look at that sometime in the future, but right now, we're just going to take a moment of silence, thank you God for this, I mean, phew, man, so many things are opening up with this inheritance, uh, with the hope, the salvation, the blessing, and its future and we know it's it's eternal life and uh we're looking for that we're praying for that and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll attain to that uh and be there with the people that uh you promised it to and uh by your grace we'll uh we'll get to that promise the promised land all right so uh we give you all the love and the glory we thank you in jesus name amen well all right, here we are. Eli made it. Eli came. Hide your heart, girl. Eli, come in. Hide your heart, girl. Uh, my cam's not working, huh? Uh, oh, let me stop this recording before I say something. Thank you, God. <laughs>